Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about Ohm's law and its limitations, power, series and parallel connection of resistances. So let's get started. So Ohm's law, uh, one of the most fundamental uh, laws in the history of electrical engineering is Ohm's law. So what is Ohm's law all about? Let's look into the statement and try to understand what Ohm's is actually trying to say. This is the statement. So uh, it states that the potential difference between two conductor, two ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through it, provided temperature and other physical parameters remain unchanged. So let us consider a typical example to understand what Ohm's law is all about. We have two figures. In figure one, uh, the potential at V1 is equal to zero volt. Let us consider this as a conductor. V1 at is equal to zero volt and V2 is equal to 10 volt. So higher is the difference between the potential. That is the potential potential difference here is 12 volt so higher will be the current flowing through it so that means lesser will be the opposition now let us consider another example where v1 is equal to 0 volt v2 is equal to 2 volt which is much lesser in comparison so the difference in potential is only 2 volt that means lesser will be the current flowing through it that means more is the opposition for the current to flow through it so this is all about ohm's law one of the important things to remember is higher the potential difference higher is the current flowing through it so v is directly proportional to i so in order to uh, remove this constant of proportionality we are introducing r which is called as proportionality constant and it is called as resistance of the conductor and its unit is ohms so this r is useful in every uh, aspect of electrical engineering because if you have a conductor and if you want a certain amount of current to flow through it you can use a resistor to oppose the current flowing through it so that is why resistance plays a very important role in electrical engineering so one more aspect in which how we can see this definition as we can also see higher the current uh, less higher will be the voltage so we can say i is directly proportional to v in order to remove the proportionality constant we will be introducing something called as G which is called as conductance of the conductor and it's the reciprocal of resistance so its unit is given as in Siemens so it is denoted as yes so once we are aware what Ohm's law is all about we can go into our next topic uh, before that one important note is temperature and other physical parameters should remain unchanged so this is the only important aspect with respect to the law if this doesn't hold good then the entire law fails so be very careful with respect to understanding the fundamentals properly so once we have a clear picture of what ohm's law is all about let's look into the limitations so what are the limitations of law, Ohm's law? Every law has certain limitations. It's not applicable in certain areas or a certain aspects. So law is something that should be applicable everywhere. But there is certain limitations. So these are the limitations that we are going to talk about. So Ohm's law is not applicable for non-metallic conductors such as silicon carbide. So it's not only silicon carbide. It's also other non-metallic conductors that Ohm's law is not applicable to. So it, it has a different equation with respect to Ohm's law that is V is equal to ki power m which is not a linear uh, relation so we're not going to go into much detail but just be aware that it's not applicable to non-metallic conductors it is only applicable to metallic conductors second uh, aspect is ohm's law is not valid for non-linear devices such as zener diodes diodes voltage regulators etc so one of the commonly involved thought processes people tend to make mistakes in the way they think uh, even in higher education such as master's degree so ohm's law is strictly not applicable to switches uh, such as diodes and zener diodes they basically resemble with the symbols uh, sh shown over here so uh, with respect to rectifiers invert inverters all these circuits have diodes switches uh, and thyristors and a lot of devices that are switching devices so ohm's law is not valid over there so be very careful with this point you have to remember this point throughout your life so once this is done the next uh, point is it's not valid for arc lamps because of their nonlinear characteristics so what are arc lamps and how they look like this is a typical representation of a carbon arc lamp so just uh, see how it's uh, uh, pictorically represented so these are basically bulbs that use arc lamps in them arc furnaces you, you can call them as well so ohm's law is not valid uh, fundamentally in these three areas so be very careful in remembering the fundamentals 
carefully so whatever you learn now will be there throughout your life so be very very careful with these three points so uh, the next uh, thing is what are the other forms of ohms law how like now we know that v is equal to high r so what are the other forms in which we can establish the relationship between in terms of ohms law so we are going to define something called as power so what is power so everything uh, with respect to electricity we talk it with respect we talk about it with respect to power so uh, power is not there and uh, power is represented in every form like if you want to see uh, amount of energy consumption it will be in watts uh, so uh, that's how power is very important uh, so in uh, electrical engineering so what is power power is the rate of doing work so how do you define it in terms of equation we can say p is equal to work done by time taken so amount of work done with respect to time whenever we are doing some work uh, uh, with respect to uh, real life it's always associated with time isn't it so p is equal to w by t this is the first equation next thing is what is potential difference in our previous uh, video we saw uh, about potential difference in case you have not seen that please do watch it so potential difference is defined as the amount of work done per uh, to move the charge from one point to another against a field so for example let us consider this is the conductor v1 is equal to 0 volt another point where v2 is equal to 10 volt this is the difference the difference in the potential is called as potential difference so what is it to bring this charge from v1 is equal to 0 volt to v2 is equal to 10 volt so it, some amount of work is to be done right from the charge coming here to this point so that is called as the amount of work done to bring this charge and the difference in this potential is called as potential difference so it's designated as potential difference is equal to work done per charge so once we are aware of it we can write w is equal to v by q i am just rearranging this equation and saying this as equation 2 now let me substitute for w in equation 1 so we will be getting substituting 2 in 1 for w we'll be getting p is equal to v into q by t so next step is we know that i is equal to q by t this is also explained in our previous video current uh, is equal to the rate of change of uh, charge with respect to time so it's called as current designated as di we can also write it as i is equal to q by t so i will be substituting uh, q by t with as i so we'll be getting p is equal to vi and its unit is in watt so this is one of the fundamental power equations that is p is equal to vi so uh, this is one of the uh, important equations with respect to electrical engineering so how can we represent them in other forms we also have p is equal to v square by r how we are getting v square by r we are substituting i is equal to to v by r by ohm's law we will be getting v square by r we also have p is equal to i square r so how we are getting i square r we are substituting v as i r from ohm's law we will be getting i square r so all the units with respect to power is always in watts so be very 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 careful with respect to the units so uh, these are the fundamentally uh, three important equations with respect to power so once we are clearly aware of uh, the basic uh, the basic formulas that are associated with power we can get started with uh, the next topic that is series connection of resistors so how uh, and what is series connection of resistances are all about so resistors are said to be in series if they are connected end to end so what does that mean i'll show you a visual representation where resistor r1 is connected to r2 is connected to r3 and it is connected back to the battery so what does that mean the this end is connected to the other end of the resistor r2 and the end of it is connected to other end of r3 so that means they're connected from one end to another end so that is called as series connection so how do we uh, develop a relationship to solve this particular this thing so before that we need to understand two important points in series combination always remember like the same current will flow through each and every component what does that mean we have v and the current flowing through the branch will be the same because the current doesn't divide in a series connection and however the voltage across the individual resistances will be different you see v1 will be the voltage drop across r1 v2 will be the voltage drop across r2 and v3 will be the voltage drop across r3 
free why is it so because we have different resistance values and we'll be having different drops across each and every component that is there so the second point states that the sum of voltage drop across each component is equal to the applied voltage across the combination so what does it mean if you're supplying V uh, as the voltage the sum of all these values the drop across all these values will always be equal to the supplied voltage the, the applied voltage that is equal to V in this case that means let us uh, try to relate relate with an equation here so V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 according to second point that is whatever you are supplying that is what you're going to get as an whole like if you're supplying V you cannot get more than V because these are only resistors so if you're using a capacitor for that matter the the theory will not be valid with respect to it so be very careful with that so V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 so we can write it as uh, we can split this uh, in terms of Ohm's law we know that V is equal to IR we have already seen that so V is equal to I into RS let RS is the series resistance effective resistance of the series combination represented as RS R1 is with respect to R resistance R1 IR2 is with respect to resistance R2 and IR3 is with respect to resistance R3 now what can be done we can take i common throughout this equation cancel this i and this i so what are we left out with we'll will be left out with rs is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 up to rn so if the series resistances are connected in series that is if they are connected end to end then we can simply add them up that's it so it's as simple as it so if the resistances are connected in series we can simply add them so how it is equivalently represented now once we add them we have to represent it in, in an equivalent form so it can be represented in this form where you will find once if r1 r2 r3 are in series you will be finding rs by applying this formula irrespective of number of resistors that are connected to it we will be representing it in terms of an equivalent resistance called rs we will be the supply voltage i will be the current flowing i will be the same throughout the combination in which the branch is there so two points to remember the current flow the current flowing through this branch in series combination will remain the same the voltage across each of these components will be different second point is the sum of voltage that is across each of the resistors is equal to the supplied voltage that is equal to V if you remember these two points definitely you will be able to understand what series connection is all about it's as simple as it is so let's once you are clearly aware of what series connection is all about let's go into our next topic which is about parallel connection so what is parallel connection uh, if uh, resistance are connected in parallel that is if they are connected between the same two points for example let's have a pictorial representation for this so in this figure you say you see a supply voltage that is a battery that is v uh, supplied over here i is the current flowing you see three resistors connected across same two point let us consider this as a let us consider this as b you see all these resistors are connected between the same two points you have three resistors so if they are connected between same two two points then they are said to be in parallel so what are the aspects with respect to parallel connection there are again two points if you are clearly understanding what these two points are then parallel connection will be very easy for you so in parallel connection the voltage across each resistor is same as they are connected between same two points so if V is the supplied voltage if you are measuring the voltage at these two points then it will be the same as whatever is being supplied the reason because we have seen the definition of potential difference like uh, it's measured between two points so whenever the co combination of uh, the load or the resistors that are connected between the same two points the voltage will always remain the same remember this important point again uh, however the current flowing through each and every branch will be different uh, the current uh, will be different according to the resistances that is according to ohm's law higher the resistances lesser will be the current lesser the resistances higher will be the current so once that is done the second important point is the sum of branch currents is equal to the current entering or leaving the combination so what does that mean if you're supplying i as the current you are no way going to get the sum of these as greater than i it should be always equal to i for example if you are opening a tap uh, and it like the water starts flowing in a bucket the water amount of water that is there in the bucket will always be equal to whatever the water supplied from the tap you're not going to get nothing extra because you're not using any external devices or external parameters for that so similarly if you're supplying i as the current the total current will be the sum the sum of currents will not be 
greater than equal to will not be greater than i it will always be equal to i so let us represent this in an equation form that is i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 let us apply ohm's law we know that i is equal to v by r so v by rp rp is the effective resistance in the parallel combination so v by r1 i am representing and i2 is represented as v by r2 and i3 is represented as v by r3 so once uh, this is written next step is we will be taking v common in this two equations and cancelling it out we will be getting 1 by rp equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and 1 by up to 1 by r n so this is the equation with respect to parallel connection usually if there are two resistors people will write rp is equal to r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 avoid using that because it's only applicable for two resistors there is not going to be two resistors used in every network so it's very uh, great if you remember uh, this uh, formula and how we will be arriving at this point that is very important so how do we pictorically represent it in a form of an equivalent circuit so that's a very important aspect as well so we will be calculating the value of rp once we are aware of rp we will be representing it simply in terms of this again the resistance rp will be connected between the same two points and it is the effective resistance in a parallel combination so we are reducing a resistance network that is r1 r2 r3 in a simple uh, way that is having only one resistor that is rp in this case the current uh, will be the same before uh, the entering before entering the resistance branch uh, so the supply the applied voltage v will be same across these two points so once you are clearly aware of this com concept we can get into the next concepts about various uh, Kirchhoff's loss. So uh, that's it for today. If you like this video, please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Uh, if you have any questions, please do write your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video.